Shumai, welcome. Today we're going to be making a point of sale device um, which has uh, NFC capabilities um, and we can use a simple cheap NFC card like this one to um, make a, a lightning payment. Um, uh, NFC is quite standard in the UK um, uh, and in most of Europe actually, I'm not sure it is so much in America. Uh, most of us have a card with a, an NFC chip inside it and we can go up to you know these point of sale devices and we can we can pay for stuff um when it's limited you can only like pay out 60 quid a day or 90 quid a day using that feature because it's meant for small payments and that's kind of a security measure as well in case somebody gets gets hold of your card uh, it probably makes sense that i kind of talk you through the concept of how i could imagine um uh, an nfc card being used um alongside lightning network maybe in the future um would be that you would have your um uh, your mobile wallet on your phone or whatever it's quite an old fashioned looking phone but there we are is this is in the future okay so you've got your mobile wallet there and then this could maybe be one of those wallet services they could use to try and generate income because I know those guys have a hard time trying to make money um, they could just have simply have some sort of button um, and then when you press that button um, you can create a custom macaroon uh, say and in that macaroon you could say well with using this macaroon you can only spend under um, 50 pounds a day for example and then you could order a card um, which is linked to that macaroon um, and that card would have the uh, the NFC chip built, built in okay so that's uh, Roger's um, Roger's card um, another option would be if you're uh, a tin foil hat wearer and you've got your blitz at home Maybe a little bit too much detail it's a little lining bolt there so we kind of what a blitz looks like. You've got your blitz at home. Um, in that blitz, you could make a custom macaroon. Again, for you can only spend under fifty pounds a day, and then maybe there'll be some sort of online service or something where you can then go and you can use that custom macaroon to order a card with um, with the uh, the macaroon built into the card, and then you could use that to pay for stuff. See. So obviously the only limitation there is that um, it's reliant upon there being a macaroon bakery. Um, uh, you could use something like BTC Pay, which I'm going to um, port this project and a bunch of other projects actually over to at some point. Um, uh, and a shout out to all those on Twitter who reminded me to, to do that because it's sort of on my list, I keep forgetting to do it. Um, today though, however, we're going to use the, the wonderful service of OpenNode which is really, really easy to set up and it's great for um, developing these sorts of things because um, it's just so straightforward and easy to set up. Uh, we're going to need two accounts. We're going to need um, um, a merchant account. Um, so that's going to be the, the account for the, the point of sale device. And then we're going to need the customer. Um, and the customer's account um, is obviously uh, related to the card. Um, so uh, as I explained, um, the, uh, the, the, the macaroon would be on the card. However, we're going to put the API key on the card. Um, and that's all we, we actually need because we can, um, uh, we just need the API key to be able to make a withdrawal from our account. And then using the invoice generated by the point of sale device, we can then send it, um, to send the bitcoins to, uh, the merchant account. So yeah, so we're going to need two accounts, two accounts first. As um, always, the um, uh, all the code and everything is on the on the GitHub for this project. Um, so it's Arc BTC Ziggy. Um, uh, Ziggy Star does it's not no, that's actually a lad insane, but you know whatever. Um, uh, it's still still Bowie, isn't it? Um, and it's got the the wiring diagram here, um, which I actually need to change because we don't need power um, from the OLED. Uh, just the the GPIO pins themselves are enough to power the OLED, so we're not going to bother powering the the the, um, the OLED uh, from the three volt in the ground, which is which is pretty cool. They will just run off the, the GPIO. It's a very low powered little device. Um, component wise, uh, we've got four main components here, which are incredibly cheap. So we've got our standard uh, ESP32, which we've used in all our other projects, uh, and that's a four dollars. And we've got a NFC uh, card uh, reader and writer, which is very cool. Um, that comes with a free NFC card uh, with the NFC chip in. Um, so it kind of has like embedded in the card, it has this big loop of copper and then that attaches to a little chip and that's where the um, data is stored. And then 
uh, that's able this thing generates a magnetic field which this then interferes with and then the data is communicated across uh, we also have a little fob here which has the same technology in and that, that comes with it as well which is cool for you know a dollar fantastic um, uh, we've got one of these adhesive uh, keypad matrixes which we used on the um, the the other point of sale tutorial which I wish I which I did and that's like 50 cents or if you buy them in, in bulk you can get them in cheap and that I think I've got mine for like 20 20 cents each or 20p each um, here's our little low LED device again that's only a couple of dollars um, it's using SPI and as I said amazingly we don't need to use the ground or the 3 volt here we just need to use these um, these five pins here um, so we have got two SPI devices. We've got this device, which is going to be using SPI, and we've got this device too, which is going to be using SPI. SPI, as I've explained in my other videos, is the communication protocol, um, uh, one of the communication protocols you can use on the SP32. Um, this device is going to be using a software SPI, whereas this device is going to be using kind of the hardware um, SPI of the SP32, which I'll, all, I'll explain in detail a little bit, a little bit later on. Um, uh, yep, I've got all my other projects here, so they all uh, use as their, their base microcontroller because it's so cheap and, and you know, open and, and wonderful. I use the, the SP32. Um, once you get this hardware, if you're ordering this hardware now, uh, please don't do go and complete this first tutorial here um, just because it's nice and simple, straightforward, and I explain uh, a little bit more about the SP32. And then if you want to work through some of the other tutorials here, then, then you can. Um, uh, I mean, this, this tutorial, a lot of it is made up of bits um, of code from uh, my point of sale tutorial, in which I utilized an e-paper and then generated a QR code on the e-paper. You could also generate a QR code on, on, on this little OLED device. However, some of the older phones struggle to kind of read the QR code. So we're just gonna be using it for outputting um, uh, data from point of sale. And then we're gonna focus on the NFC thing. However, I will at some point incorporate some NFC feature into this thing, because it's um, it should run alongside it, no problem. Uh, so yeah, so so all the codes on the GitHub. So so make sure you get the GitHub up. Uh, once you've um, uh, got all the the, the parts, um, there's no soldering involved, uh, which is good. It's nice and easy. Just some of these these little jumper wire things, um, and then you can go through and then just um, use the uh, uh, use the, the the wiring diagram on the GitHub. Um, I will change this before I. Um, uh, by the time you get to this GitHub, so there won't be a connection going to the, the power here um, from this OLED. I'll, I'll get rid of that. Um, so this is where I probably do the fast forward thing and then uh, uh, quickly quickly wire this thing up. It's worth noting actually I've actually I've got the, the keypads upside down as well on the uh, on the on the on the other wiring diagram it should go the other way around I'll have to change that too so yeah ignore my um, dodgy uh, wire management here. I haven't used any particular colors. I've just used any old jump cables lying around. So um, Yeah, so you could you could be a little bit more organized in your in your wire management there um, So I'm going to plug in my, my ESP32 here, and I've got a, a little light coming on here, which is good. It's a good sign um, The first thing you're gonna have to do in uh, the uh, Arduino ID is you're gonna have to install the library for the uh, RFID so the library which I've installed, which I've forgotten the name of because it's not got a particularly catchy name. RFID is MFRC522. Um, I'm pretty sure you can just install that directly from the library manager here. I can't quite remember. Or you might need to download it and, and do a manual install into the Arduino IDE, which if you're not sure how to do, you just, just Google and, and you'll be able to find it. Once that's installed, it will install a whole bunch of libraries. So, um, not a whole bunch of libraries, a whole bunch of examples. Uh, so it registers as incompatible on my Arduino IDE, but just ignore that. Um, uh, and we're gonna go to the dump info example here. Okay, now we've, we're using slightly different pins to this. So we need to change that nine there to a 22 and we need to change the 
chip selector pin. We need to change that to a five, okay? Um, and then if I click, I've got the um, USB selected. If I click upload, and hit the little flash button on my ASP32. Okay, so basically if I put my um, card on there now, and then quickly switch back. Oh man, I've got my serial monitor open, what a plum. Let's try that again, very starting. Okay, so I'm gonna put my card on the, the reader. Okay, cool. And now you can see it's reading all the data from the card. Right, now, um, there's 64 blocks which you can store data in, and each block is about 15, uh, is 16 bytes long. Um, um, so for our example, um, we're going to be using Open Node, and their API key, we can get it down to 32 bytes, so we're going to have to stick it in two of these blocks, basically. And then, you know, there's still going to be 62 blocks worth of empty space. Um, oh no, in saying that, I think the first block here is actually taken up with um, important uh, zero block, is actually taken up with the um, important information for the card, and if you, if you erase that, then you can you can kill the card, which we which we don't want to do. So yes, yeah, so that's interesting. Um, so that's that's how the data is stored inside the NFC chip. Um, so yeah, we close that. We don't need that now. Nope. Um, so yeah, I mean, just like uh, with the other projects, I guess it's a case of copying and pasting the the code across from the GitHub. So if we go over to um, first, we'll do the right data. Um, uh, part. In fact, let's set up the open node accounts. So we need a merchant and a um, uh, a customer account. Um, uh, I'm already logged in on on on. So this will be the. Imagine this is the customer account. I'm a customer. Okay. Um, I need a. Um, API key in order to be able to have permission to withdraw funds from my account so I can send them somewhere else. Um, so I'm going to go to settings. Um, in order to access the API, the, the keys, you'll have to uh, sign up for a, a dev account, which is, is really simple to do in, in OpenNode. And if we click on add key here, um, and it's going to be a um, NFC uh, with withdraw okay and it is a withdrawal type now we need to put in our TFA here there we are so that's the key um, for uh, which I'm obviously going to delete by the time I publish this video that's the customer key isn't it so that's the actual key which we're going to embed into the card. So I mean, this whole project—it's—it's it's a it's, you know—it's a prototype. It's for demonstration purposes. You'd have to do a, a, a good amount of work on it in order to make it um, safe and secure and, and usable out in the wild. I think. Okay, we also need um, login as a make another account. I've already made another account, and this is going to be this is our merchant account. So, um, Roger, not related to anyone in real life, obviously. Um, Roger has a little coffee shop and he wants to start um, accepting uh, lightning. Is it calm? I think it's calm, isn't it? Yeah. Um, he has a coffee shop and he wants to start accepting lightning payments. Okay, cool. So here we just need um, uh, permission to make invoices. So we just need an invoice. So we need to put the TFA in there. Um, so this is the merchant's API key. Okay, All right, so I'll just leave that there for a second. Um, once you close these little boxes, by the way, you can't access those API keys again. So make sure you, you know, write them down, put them somewhere safe. Okay, so I'll I'll leave that open because we can use that for um, 
check in to see the money going in later. And right, so we go to Ziggy, and then we go to Write Data. Okay, and then we copy. Um, so this is to actually like write the data onto our NFC card, for example. Okay, we copy that in place there. Boom, and then. Okay, we'll call this um, NFC, right, right, so press the little button, and then if I open my little serial monitor here, Right, so if I present my card, so if I if I place the card on here, okay, it's asking for uh, my macaroon stroke withdrawal prior API key. So this code is set up for the, the withdrawal API key, but you could also just set it up for a macaroon. And you can have multiple fields as well, so you could then have your you know your I your IP address for your node, um, or you could easily um, configure this to I think it timed out then uh, you could easily configure this to use um, run with BTC uh, pay server um, so I'll tap the card in it again it should come up again there we go um, right where are we right we need this don't we so we need this 32 by API key here we had to strip the little hyphens out by the way because um, I was too lazy to automate that and put in the code okay cool so what it did is it took that 32 um, byte there um, and it split it in half into two 16, straight 16 byte strings and then it, it stored each one of those in those two blocks, in block one and block two of the, the NFC card, okay? Um, so we've done that. The next uh, uh, file we need to make is the actual point of sale reader file. So if you go to Ziggy, let me go to the POS bit here. Now there's two files here, okay? So we're gonna click on the API, not API call, sorry. We're gonna click on the main INO here. Select all that. Um, so this is just made up of my, uh, mostly out of the other point of sale um, tutorial. And then I've just added a few little bits. Okay, so I'll quickly talk you through the code. So we've got a bunch of libraries here. We've got this one's for connecting to the Wi-Fi, obviously, and then doing some um, uh, secure HTTPS uh, calls to the OpenNode API. And then we've got the SPI uh, library. That's because we're using uh, two, two SPI communications, so we need to use that thing uh, to select the pins. This is for the NFC um, chip uh, reader, writer. This is for the little OLED screen. Um, I've got two key keypad uh, calls there, which is silly. Um, the Arduino JSON thing here, this is, you will recognize this from the other tutorials. This is just so when we get our data back from um, OpenNode that we can um, pass through it and then pull out the data we need. Um, I'm not sure what that does. It probably does something I've forgotten. <laughs> so you need to put your Wi-Fi details in so your point of sale can actually connect to your Wi-Fi, which it does very fast, may I add. Um, and then obviously you've got your open node API um, details here. Um, so a secure port we use. Uh, this is where we put our merchant key. Okay, so we've got a merchant key here. There we go. So this is our merchant key. Um, and then we've got a description card payment. You could actually put some sort of like unique identifier there if you wanted to, but I couldn't be bothered. A um, bunch of other um, uh, declares here. And now we include um, the API calls, so the API calls to open node. Um, that is in a separate file, so we'll need to... Um, I know in the other project as well that I used uh, Platform.io, but I just couldn't get the RFID library working in platform IO so I just gave up on it and used the Arduino ID where everything seemed to work fine so I just yeah um, uh, you'll need to um, use notepad or something and then save that in the same folder that the um, 
uh, well, I haven't actually saved it yet, have I? Um, in the same folder that this, this file's in, okay? So save as, and we'll call that um, NFCPOS, okay? And then we'll save that in NFCPOS, and we'll call this file API calls H. There we are, sweet. Um, uh, I'll just show you that if you if you now close this, because the moment you know we've just got this open, um, but if you if you close that and then reopen it, um, it will include that extra tab there. So that's quite neat in the Arduino IDE. Um, it'd be better if we did it, you know, as soon as you save the file or whatever. So we've got a bunch of API calls which it calls. Um, so they include things like uh, fetching the payment. Um, so that's just like spits back connects to OpenNode API, says how much it wants an invoice for, and then OpenNode API spits back the invoice. Um, and then we have uh, make payment. Um, so I've kind of used the word macro in here as a, as a way to sort of say this is this is where that, that kind of data would go. Uh, anyway, so this this actually, um, once the POS um, gets the, the data off the NFC card, um, it then connects to OpenNode and then withdraws, uh, uses the uh, invoice which has been generated, um, and the withdrawal ID to be able to withdraw the money and then pay the merchant. Um, this is check payments, that just checks, it's pretty self-explanatory, it checks to see if the payment's been made. Okay, cool. Um, we select the, those two pins, um, 22 and five here. Uh, this is for the, um, uh, the, to start up the RFID, the NFC reader. And then this is for the OLED screen. Um, because we're using the software's PI connection for the OLED, we had to specify some uh, pins here, some GPIO pins. If you use my um, uh, GPIO diagram, then you can just leave these as they are. Uh, we've got a keypad, um, some 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 code here for our keypads so that just sets up our little um, matrix keypad for us. And again, if you plug it in the way which I've told you to plug it in, then these can stay the same. These numbers. Um, yeah, there we are. Now we've got a, a couple of functions. Uh, we've got a keypad amount. So that function just basically all it does is like um, when you're typing in, it just registers the, the numbers you're typing in and then stores them. Yeah. Um, car check, we'll come back to that in a second. Okay, so first thing the uh, ESP32 does after registering those functions is it runs the setup function here, okay? So in which it turns everything on. So we've got our serial connection here, um, we've got our, um, our uh, NFC reader here, um, we've got our screen starting here. We connect to the Wi-Fi, and then you know, it says connecting on the little OLED screen. And then once it's connected, it says connected. And then we go into our loop. So the first thing we do is we run the keypad amount here. So this basically means that like um, you can type you know, how many, however many Satoshis into the on, on the keypad, and it'll come up on the OLED. And then um, in keypad amount, in the function, in the function of keypad amount, if you hit the hashtag, um, then it will do a little dot, 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 and it will um, it'll break that loop. Uh, so it can, um, it can go and fetch the payment. So it takes the amount, so the amount you entered into the keypad, it goes and fetches the payment. Rub, 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 here, goes and fetches the payment. Um, that spits back the invoice payment request. And then, what's it do? And then it, oh, it starts checking to see if a card's being used. Um, if a card's being used, that's card check. So if it sees a card, so it says on the little OED screen tap card. Um, if it sees a card, it runs this code here. Uh, it goes and fetches the, the two parts. Remember we saved like our API key in two halves, in two blocks. So it checks the, collects the first half, collects the second half, and then it kind of stitches it all together in the format which OpenNode expects. Um, and then it just checks to see, it just, uh, just checks the, the payment, see if the payment's actually been made. And if the payment has been made, then it says paid. Um, and then it, it goes on to the next, uh, um, 
there should be a little delay there. I didn't, yeah, there needs to be a delay there. So I'll stop there to GitHub. Um, so we'll put a delay of two seconds in there. Oh, that's my, uh, <laughs> that's funny. I just pressed one of the hotkeys for my um, thing. Right, okay, yeah, so we put a delay there for two seconds. Um, and that, that should totally work. So I'll put in my details. Um, while I do that, I will switch to this camera here. I'll put in all my Wi-Fi details. Ah, oh, okay, so upload it. It take a little while to compile, it's quite big, oh no, it's quick. Put the little button on the SP32. Okay, so it's uploading. It's uploading, maybe I'll switch to the camera here. Okay, it's uploading, it's uploading. It's uploaded, there we are, nice, it says connecting. See if I put my Wi-Fi details in properly. Uh, yeah, there we are, it says SATS. It did say connected very quickly and now it says SATS. Um, so if I type in like 121, and then hit the little hashtag. In fact, I'll show you, you can actually hit the star and it'll, it'll clear it, which is quite useful. Uh, 121, hit the little hashtag. And then I get my card, uh, which I've, I've stuck some pictures of David Bowie on there, which looks pretty cool. Um, and I tap the card on there. Hold on there for a second. Paid, boom, fantastic. And then you're ready for the next customer who's gonna pay 32 for Satoshis for something. Uh, this customer though, because obviously it comes with a fob, I've pre-programmed this fob. With the, the, I've written the, um, the API, the withdraw API key on there. And then I'm gonna tap that on there. Hold it, and then there we are, paid. So that's as functional as the um, devices you get in shops, but we've managed to make it for like $8. Um, you can put it in a little box, which I'll do in a moment. Um, uh, yeah, well, first we're gonna check to see if those have actually uh, gone through. I'll, I'll prove that they've um, they've actually paid. So if I switch screens, um, and then if we go to, where is he? Is it that one? I think it's that one, isn't it? If we go to dashboard, here we are four hours ago. See all. Do I need to refresh that? I think I probably do. Ah, there we are. <laughs> okay, cool. So here's all the car payments we just made. Um, there we are for 32, for 121. Uh, 57 is a bunch of other tests which I did before. So it works, it totally works. Um, uh, yeah, done. Um, I'm just gonna now um, make it look pretty and put it inside a, uh, put the whole thing inside a, a little box to make it look pretty. Okay, so I glued in the the, the NFC card reader, so that's just underneath the, um, the keypad. Um, I've got a little LiPo battery here, and I'll just show you, look, if you plug it into the, the five volt on the ground here, on these two pins here, There we are, connecting, connected, and then we're putting our Satoshis, one, oh, one, twenty-one, there we go, get our card ready, tap our card on there, sort of in the middle, and it should say paid. Brilliant. Uh, it works. I've got my point of sale device here. Um, it's a bit crude, obviously, but you can make it look prettier. You could get a specific box or purpose-built box or 3D print something or buy these little project boxes online on Amazon. They're pretty cheap. Um, uh, and I've got my little NFC card here and I can make lightning payments. Um, it's ideal for lightning because it's, it's, you know, it's, it's quick. You don't want to be stood around for too long when you're making a small payment for something. It's quick. Um, it's easy. Uh, top of card on there. Wait a second, and then, yep, you pay, there we are, fantastic. Um, and then obviously, you know, it's using Bitcoin, which is great. Uh, obviously this is using Open Node. Um, next week I hope to port it across to BTC Pay, and then 
in the future when we have the macaroon um, bakery, then um, I'll, uh, I'll 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 look into you know having this talk directly to a, a node, a lightning node, uh, like a blitz or something. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you again. Thanks.